So good evening again. Uh, we are back to the study of the Spirit's book. Um, we are on the last chapter of the book, which is chapter two of book four. Book four is Hopes and Consolations. Uh, we are in the item Future Atonements. Oh, we started last week. We did the first question, which was 983, actually Temporary Atonement, sorry. And uh, we are going to start today at 984. Okay, Philip? Yes. <clears throat> Are all major advers adversities in our current earthly lives always an atonement for current faults committed by us? <clears throat> no, we have already told you that they are trials imposed by God or chosen by you in the spirit state before your reincarnation to atone for the faults committed by you in a previous life. No violation of God's laws, especially of the law of justice, ever remains unpunished, and a corrective measure will sooner or later always take place. If you do not correct it in the same life, you will certainly have to correct it in another. This is why individuals whom you view as fair-minded are often tormented by the faults of their past. That's interesting because the Kardec asks the question here, are all our struggles of our earthly, current earthly lives always an atonement for current faults, meaning faults co uh, committed by us? And actually, um, spiritists a lot of times think that uh, um, our faults are always a uh, result of things we did in the past, right? In past, in previous lives. And actually, um, it is a combination of both, right? We bring to this incarnation uh, the, 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 the atonements for uh, whatever we have to go through according to what we have done in previous incarnations. And this is, uh, as they say here, um, trials imposed by God here means by the natural law, right? The natural law we will create these atonements cause and consequence, which is our natural law. Or if we can participate in our reincarnation planning, we can choose uh, the, 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 the issues that we uh, may have to face in this incarnation. But the law of justice it tells us that uh, we have to face the consequences of our actions. And if we don't do it in the, in, in the same life, we will postpone it to a future life. And But we have to correct. And again, it's not an eye for an eye, which is something that we learn. We can evolve through love. We can repair through love. Uh, unfortunately, we are still... Uh, not evolved enough to be able to evolve through love, most of us, so we evolve through pain. You know, we have to suffer, struggle, so we can correct our mistakes. So uh, everyone that is incarnated on earth, we are all in perfect spirits. We are always going to have, and this is a world of trials and atonements or trials and expiations, so we all have to face uh, both trials and atonements. Again, trials are challenges that are not consequence of our past, but are opportunities for us to learn and to grow. So there are obstacles in our life that is an opportunity for us to learn and to grow. Uh, atonements are consequence of our uh, mistakes that we have to correct. Okay? Questions here? Okay. 985. <clears throat> when a spirit reincarnates in a more advanced world, is this a reward? It is a consequence of its purification. As spirits become purified, 
they reincarnate in progressively higher worlds until having rid themselves of all materiality, wash away all impurities, and entering the eternal happiness of fully purified spirits in God's heart. In worlds where the conditions of existence are less material than ours, the wants of their inhabitants are less crude and their physical suffering is less acute. The people from those worlds no longer possess the vile passions that make them each other's enemies in lower worlds. Having no motives for hatred or jealousy, they live in peace because they practice the law of justice, love, and charity and experience none of the worries and anxieties incited by envy, pride, and selfishness that torment us on earth. Oh, when we talk about the progress of a spirit, uh, the spirit can progress faster than the world uh, that it's incarnated or slower than the world in the than the world it where it's incarnated and uh, if you move faster than the world you deserve to go to a more evolved world you can make that choice again the evolution up is individual is an individual choice made by the spirit to go to a more evolved world which doesn't mean that it cannot eventually come back uh, for an incarnation here if uh, it wants to help a loved one, like it's the case of Alcione in the book uh, Renunciation, right? Uh, now, when a spirit evolves less um, than the world, then the world is going to a change, which is what's actually happen happening to Earth, right? Moving from a world of trials and atonements to a world of regeneration, Spirits that can no longer stay here on earth, uh, spirits that uh, they do evil for the sake of evil. Again, it's a, a smaller group of spirits. They are going to uh, be taken to a less evolved world where they will be um, more advanced intellectually than the spirits incarnated there. Um, more or less same in, uh, in terms of uh, moral evolution, right? Which is what happened here on Earth around 10,000 years ago with the, the spirits that came from Capella that uh, built the pyramids and all these ancient marvels that we have uh, that were spirits from more, more advanced intellectually, but uh, not morally. Uh, and the difference again, you move uh, above up individually, you move lower in groups. So groups are taken from Earth, it's already a process in place, taken from Earth to less evolved worlds. Uh, but again, we have to separate uh, spirits that uh, uh, do evil as followers, just because they're following the trend. These are spirits that will still have an opportunity here and spirits that do evil because they take pleasure in doing evil. These are the spirits that are being removed from Earth. They are having their last opportunity here, uh, last incarnation, and they are moving to a less evolved world. Um, okay. Um, what is, yeah, uh, according to Georges Laha, he said that when the world goes into a transition from one uh, a world like Earth, from trials and atonements to a world of, of uh, regeneration, the change from this uh, planet to a more evolved planet is temporarily suspended because we need all the help we can get in the transition. So the spirits are not going to, to choose to move uh, to a more evolved uh, planet because we are all needed here, uh, according to his uh, words, okay? 
All right. Uh, Dani. Can you explain that again? I, I don't think I understand. Uh, the transition. What you just what you just said. Oh, um, is that um, the question talks about a spirit reincarnating in a more advanced world as a reward, right? According to Georges Laha, in the stage of a uh, that we are right now, which is a transition from world of trials and atonements to a world of regeneration. All the spirits that are incarnated on earth uh, will continue to incarnate on, on earth, even if they already have the merit to move to a more advanced world, because they are all needed here in this transition, because transition always means turbulence, right? And uh, when you have turbulence, you need more evolved spirits to help. Okay. So we know the words, Paco. We're gonna have to put up with us for a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome back, Paco. Okay. Nine eighty six. Can spirits who have progressed in their terrestrial life reincarnate in the same world? Yes. And if they have not been able to accomplish their mission, they may ask to complete it in a new life. In that case, it is no longer an atonement for them. Okay. Um, this question and answer is a little, can be a little bit confusing, right? So mm -hmm. have, that have progressed enough here, can they continue to reincarnate here? Uh, yes, and we discussed that a little bit, right? But then the second part, the spirits tells us that if they have not been able to accomplish their mission, they may ask to complete it in a new life. What does this mean? Uh, mission, what is a mission first, right? It's, uh, it's something that you come uh, an opportunity to help an individual, a group, or a larger group, right? Mission. Uh, we Normally, we, we think of mission of something big, and it's not necessary. Maybe your mission is to help that loved one that is still struggling, and you came exactly only for that. Um, it's a struggle, a mission, because you are going to face challenges and difficulties. But the characteristic of a missionary is that he faces the struggle with resignation and acceptance. Again, Alcione. Yes, again, Alcione, yes. So if someone, if you ask yourself, is this person here on a mission? Just look how this person reacts to adversities. If they act, calmly with resignation and acceptance, it's very likely that will be a mission. Uh, parents that come to raise children and they will have very difficult children and you will see the parents that are very patient, very uh, embracing of their children, accept the, the difficulties. You can call this a mission of these parents. Again, these are exceptions, right? Uh, most of us come here with our trials and expiations, not with a mission. But there are missionaries, and there are many amongst us. How do we recognize them? By how they face their difficulties and challenges. Uh, look at, uh, again, an, an extreme example, but Francisco Xavier, right? Chico Xavier. He was always... Uh, humble, calm, and with, without, uh, uh, you hear, he, here and there you hear some complaints that he, he made and Emmanuel was very strict with him, but um, you, you see about his life, you read about his life and you see how it is a missionary, uh, a Mother Teresa, a Gandhi, right? Again, the mission can be different things, right? 
can be to change uh, like Gandhi, right? To free his country uh, by, but how did it, he chose the mission, right? To, to face the mission with non-violence. This is a characteristic of a missionary, right? Uh, and again, when you read the story of St. Francis of Assisi, right? He went to the Crusades in the beginning. He got see, very sick in the Crusades. So how a missionary as evolved as St. Francis of Assisi got involved in a crusade, right? Uh, again, we are in perfect spirits. The fact that you are missionary doesn't mean that you are perfect. Doesn't mean that you are going to make only the right choices. If we made only the right choices, we would be perfect spirits. So we are going to make mistakes. Missionaries make mistakes. You read the story of Mother Teresa. You read the story of Gandhi. They made mistakes in their lives. But if you see the whole, right? Uh, when you talk about Martin Luther King, right? Another missionary for sure, a very big missionary. His family life was very difficult, right? He had problems and his family wasn't very happy with him. Um, he didn't really pay much attention to his kids. Apparently he had problems with his wife, but these are personal issues for him. The mission, he fulfilled the mission, right? He made a difference. And uh, this is very important for us to remember. Missionaries are not perfect spirits. They are not going to be do everything right. Okay. Right? Questions, comments? No. Okay. 987. Yep. <clears throat> what becomes of the person who, without doing wrong, does nothing to free? to be free from the influence of matter. Since such individuals have made no progress towards perfection, they have to begin a new life of the same nature as the one they have left. They remain stationary and prolong the suffering of atonement. So that's an interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what happens to those that, um, are not really doing anything wrong particularly, but they're not doing any, anything right also. They're not making any effort to progress. Uh, they are comfortable in their material lives in terms of they are not doing, causing any harm to, to those around them or to their families, but they are focused only on their material lives. They're not very focused on any spiritual learning involvement. Um, you know, they have to come back and continue because the pro there is always progress, right? One, one thing that it took me a long time to understand, right? Because you read these questions and you, you see uh, the spirits say clearly here, they remain stationary. How can you remain stationary and be progressing at the same time, right? And um, you progress because you are at least learning that remaining stationary is no good. So that is progress. That is the very little progress that you achieve when you do nothing, when you remain stationary. Uh, so you are really not stationary 100%. You are stationary and learning that that's not the, the right um, approach it may it may not be immediate it may take some incarnations but eventually you look back and you recognize that uh, you didn't do anything useful to yourself in your evolutionary path and uh, learning from your mistakes and addressing the mistakes and trying to correct them is how we are going to uh, progress from that moment on okay Nine eighty-eight. <clears throat> there are individuals whose lives are perfectly calm, who have nothing to do for themselves 
and are exempt from all worries? Is their good fortune proof that they have nothing to repent from any former existence? Do you know many such people? If you think you do, you are mistaken. Such lives are often only calm on the surface. A spirit may have chosen such a life, but after leaving it, it realizes that it has not helped it move forward, and it regrets the time it has wasted in idleness. Bear in mind that a spirit can only acquire knowledge and elevation through activity. So if it sleeps without a care in the world, it does not advance. It is as though it, according to your world, needs to work, but goes off for a stroll or goes to bed with the intention of doing nothing. Bear in mind that each of you must answer for voluntary uselessness. And that such uselessness is always lethal to your future happiness. The sum of that happiness is exactly proportionate to the sum of the good that you have done, while the sum of your unhappiness is always proportionate to the sum of the wrongs you have done and how many you have made unhappy. Okay, so here we're talking about, the question talks about those individuals that um, apparently there's nothing wrong with their lives and they don't worry about anything, but they don't do much. Um, isn't because they don't have anything to know, no atonements. We live in a world of trials and atonements. So everyone has atonements here. Uh, we are in perfect spirits. That's the best version of ourselves. So if that's the best version of ourselves, we can imagine that uh, the worst, worst version of ourselves did some mistakes in the past that still needs repair. So the Spirit tells us very clear here, right? Um, if you think you know such people, you are mistaken because it's only calm on the surface, right? We don't really know what goes inside each person. You know, some people apparent look very calm, apparent in appearance, but uh, they can be very um, unstable underneath, right? <clears throat> Again, if you go, if you choose a life of, of being uh, isolating yourself from the problems of the world, right? Uh, eventually you realize, like we discussed here, you not help move forward. So you realize that you missed opportunities. You think of about the, 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 the parable of the Good Samaritan, right? Um, there are the, the two priests, right, of the, um, the Pharisee and the Sadducee, I think they were the past before the injured man and did nothing, right? Move away, moved away from the injured man. They didn't do anything. They missed an opportunity to do good. They didn't cause any harm to the man. Again, if the man dies because you, you didn't help him, you are going to be responsible because you had an opportunity. But let's say the other, the Samaritan came and helped the man. These two that passed and didn't do anything, they were not responsible for the man because the man didn't die or anything but they missed an opportunity, right? They didn't do anything bad, but they missed an opportunity to do good. And these are the things that uh, we are going to have to face the consequences, right? Again, understanding our limitations and our condition as imperfect spirits. But there are some things, some opportunities in our lives that we consciously decide to avoid. where we should have done something about it, 
right? Um, again, um, a doc, uh, uh, someone falls sick in the middle of the street. If you're not a doctor, you cannot do anything there, right? You can try to, to protect the person from, from curious people, but you cannot really help to, and if the person dies, you're, it's not your responsibility. You couldn't have done anything. Now, if you are a doctor and you choose not to help that person because you are in a hurry or something, right? Then you create, if something really happens to that person, you create a karma from, for yourself, right? Um, I was... Uh, remembering this week that that story of uh Chico Xavier right when he was walking to work and he was late and then a lady starts calling him right and uh and and Chico pretends he doesn't listen and continues walking and Emmanuel calls him and say where are you going he said I'm late for work and then Emmanuel says well you're already late so it doesn't matter if you are five minutes more later stop and talk to the lady and then he goes back and the lady is asking for help and uh, and uh, he gives uh, the, the, the prescription. She doesn't have money and Emmanuel tells him to tell her to just uh, uh, tear the paper and uh, eat every piece of paper every day because that would be the, the medicine that she needed. And then she went away. And then after she was, no, after she could walk, Emmanuel asked him to look back. And uh, when he looked back, he, uh, he saw um, a lot of rays of light coming out of the woman in his direction as a, a, a thankful gesture of energy of her thanking him for having helped her. So if he didn't do anything there, right? We don't know the alternative. The woman would be get sick and... but. It, it is an opportunity that he would have missed, right? That, uh, of course, he has a manual to, to call his attention. We would like to have someone like that, right? But we have. We have our spiritual guides. Do we listen to them? <laughs> Shiko was always listening. Do we? So we have the opportunities, right? But again... Um, as the spirit says here, bear in mind that each of you must answer for voluntarily, voluntary uselessness. And that uselessness is always lethal to your future happiness. Why is lethal? Because you are going to regret. And when you are regretting something, you are not happy. You're not fully happy. Uh, again, the words here, voluntary uselessness, right? Because sometimes there are people I want to help without having the capabilities to help and they end up causing more trouble than helping. So we need to understand when we can be of help and when we must step away from something because we are not going to be of any help, right? Uh, someone falls sick in the street again, going... To, to the same example, and you are not a doctor. A doctor arrives, a team of, uh, uh, a team of uh, helpers arrive. If you have nothing that you can contribute, move away from it, right? Instead of staying there and looking to see what happens that, you know, our curiosity getting the better, best of us most of the times, right? Move away from it. That's the best option that's uh, not uselessness that's active understanding of the situation and what you should do in this type of situations okay all right comments questions here Help. yeah i think in this answer it covered two of the teachings of christ the first one is a it's easy to understand. You have heard, do not do to others what you do not like others to do to you. But in truth, I tell you, do to others what you'd like others to do to you, right? So it's a proactive teaching. It's exactly the, the 
the spheres of Taranasi here. We need to be proactive. We have to move towards our progress. We have to move towards the exercise of charity. To just sit around and not do anything is, is, a, is a wrong. And though the one when Jesus says, let the dead bury their dead, he's teaching us that life is action, life is proactive as well. You know, <clears throat> if life has no antonym, right? There is nothing that opposes life because life is eternal and there is nothing, there is not a, a word there because the antonym of life if there was anything, there would be inactivity. Our life is supposed to be something progressive, moving forward continuously. So when Jesus refers and says that the dead bury the dead, he's making a statement that those who do not move in the right direction, those who are not doing something are like the dead. Nine eight nine. There are individuals <clears throat> who, although are not bad, make everyone around them unhappy <clears throat> due to their character. What consequences shall they suffer? Such individuals are definitely not good, and they will atone for their wrong by being in contact with people whom they have made unhappy. This is a constant atonement for them. In another life, they will endure all that they have caused others to endure. You know, um, here, Kardec is talking about those that, um, you know, they, they are not intentionally uh, causing harm to others. They're not intentionally bad, but they are miserable and make everyone around them miserable also, unhappy, right? Due to their character. So it's someone that uh, is uh, immersed in the turmoil of their own issues, their own problems, and uh, their reaction towards the world is to make everyone around them unhappy also and miserable also, right? Uh, misery loves company, what well, the phrase we know, right? So they are trying to find any uh, all those around them misery, mis uh, miserable. Thanks. <laughs> so um, you know you create consequences. If you make people suffer, you are going to to create consequences, even if it's involuntary, right? Because these people they are not necessarily trying to to disturb others is how they are, right? But they need to work uh, on themselves and try to improve their mood or keep their misery to themselves, not to try to contaminate those around them. And uh, we all know this, so one, people, one person or another like that, right? Many of us have one of those in our families, right? And they are very challenging to deal with. Everything is, is, is bad, everything, is, there is always complaints. Uh, and, this, and you see many of these individuals, as, as Kardec says here, they are not bad per se. It's just the way they behave causes a lot of uh, unhappiness around them. And uh, this is a an imperfection that needs to, will need to be addressed, if not in this present life, in the future life. Um, there is a story that Ivaldo tells that is exactly the opposite of that, of that right? Of this uh, lady that uh, used to go to him and, uh, and tell him that she was very worried because everything in her life was perfect. Everything was working uh, very well. She was, you know, uh, had a very good life so she was very concerned all the time that something was going to happen to her because it's not possible that everything is going to be perfect all the time and uh, 
And she went there once and twice. And the third time, Edivaldo told her, listen, be happy now and let the future happens. And then you worry when the future happens because what you're making yourself miserable because everything is perfect, right? So, you know, that's the other way around. But uh, in the end, it's, it's something like that, right? Um, we, we, we that uh, we know spiritism, we have to be very careful about how we uh, behave towards those around us. And we have to question ourselves if we are not making those around us unhappy for some reason. Uh, it can be unconscious, but we have to analyze because if we are doing that, something is wrong with us, with the relationship, with the way we are uh, treating them or they are treating us. We need to address these issues, right? Uh, because if we keep um, kicking the can down the road, eventually we have to face the 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 consequences and um, do we want to solve it now or do we want to live for another life, right? Again, we cannot sort all of our problems here. We address a lot of them, but uh, it's on our evolutionary path. We need to be able to address some of our issues uh, in order to make some progress to have a better opportunity for our next incarnation or to find a better place when we are back in the spiritual world by the end of this journey okay yeah so, yes, yeah i have a question so you mean that all the issues that i do have cannot be solved in just this incarnation am i correct that's what you said yes yes okay. um, again it's not impossible oh but it's almost impossible okay can you, can you change completely in one incarnation? Well, you have the story of uh, uh, the Paul of Tarsus, right? He, he made a huge change in his life uh, in one incarnation. He had all the intellectual abilities, the knowledge. Uh, he had all the answers, but he had um, the... the, the the aspect of love was missing on his actions and on his behavior. But when Jesus appeared to him, he worked very hard to develop that. Uh, he didn't become perfect, but he changed a lot. So it is possible to make a big change in one incarnation. Yes, it is. But it is unlikely. Normally, we, you know, we have a, uh, as Desu Andoli puts, we have a lot of... Um, empty little cups which is our imperfections and we have to fill those cups with the uh, the qualities and uh we leave the this incarnation with a lot of those little cups still empty because we cannot uh, address our imperfections but again we have to be very patient with ourselves and we very uh, accept we, we have to have acceptance of our limitations because otherwise we start feeling guilty for everything that we cannot uh, achieve and uh, guilty can be paralyzing, which is also not good, right? We have to have active resignation, you know, something that you like, Paco, active resignation in terms of accepting our limitations, working on them actively to repair but understanding that we are not going to become perfect uh, in one incarnation or in many of them. But uh, if we leave this better than when we started, it's already uh, a good way. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Okay, another subject here. Oh, sorry, Daniel, you raised your hand. Go ahead. But, the, but just um, using the same example of Paul, when he made the transformation, it didn't mean his life was easy peasy, like, oh, I'm transforming, now my life is uh, free of pain and I'm a better person. It was just the beginning. 
of all the challenges that come with the transformation. Yeah. So I think we we might get easily eager to to change and okay, how how can I ease the, the pain, right? And the life striking hard sometimes, and and the people we have around us that might make them uh, people around them miserable, and you try to you know, do your best to endure and be next to this person or people that we always have around us in our families or in our communities. But then when you open the the crack, it's just the, the crack, the, the earthquake is just starting, right? Paul's life, yes. it's a good example in that way, right? He was... Yeah. yeah, not uh, in heaven. We very nice. On the contrary, when uh, after he met with Jesus and he changed uh, his life from that moment, was suffering all the time, struggling all the time. How many times he was stoned? How many times he was beaten? Um, he lost. Uh, you know, he he faced uh, challenges when uh, when reuniting with the Christians and. Uh, when he has the dream that he meets um, Stephen and Abigail, right? Uh, Abigail, he starts um, complaining about uh, the struggles that he was facing. He just he had just been uh, abandoned by his father, right? His father uh, told him to choose between Jesus and him, and he chose Jesus. And Abigail tells him. You are just starting. You are complaining. You are just. You haven't even started your mission, so you can imagine how much ahead. So, um, it's a and a good example. Of course, uh, we are not. We are not going to be able to be Paul of Tarsus, right? But uh, but yes, um, difficulties are part of our learning process and our evolutionary process. How we face the difficulties is what's going to show if we are really learning, right? Resignation, acceptance, and faith in facing the challenges is what's, we, what, what's going to show us to ourselves if we are making progress or not, how we react to the challenges. And again, we're not going to react with acceptance and resignation to all challenges. We're not perfect spirits, but... Uh, but we need to try. We need to, to, to exercise. It's a constant exercise of accepting the challenges and, uh, and trying to understand, uh, like Elmo likes to say, right? Not why me, but what for, right? What is this happening? What, what for this is happening to me? What can I learn from this? How can I evolve from this? Uh, it's not easy, but that's... The, the, the challenge that we have to uh, to face ourselves. Okay. Right. You are mute, Philip. Nine ninety one. Nine ninety. Nine ninety. Does repentance take place in the physical or spiritual state? In the spiritual state, nevertheless, it may also take place in the physical state when you clearly understand the difference between good and bad. Well, repentance, the, the, the second R, right? First R is recognition. You recognize that you make a mistake. That's the first step. You repent. And the third R, the reparation. Uh, the repentance can take place both in the spiritual world or in the physical world. What they say here, why they say in the spiritual state, nevertheless, it may also take place in the physical state, because more likely than not, it will happen there. When you are back in the spiritual world, you are going to repent recognize and repent what you have done and then you need a new reincarnation to repair reparation uh, but you can also do it in the uh, physical 
world in the incarnation you know you can recognize mistakes that you made and again we're not we're talking about big mistakes things that uh, affect our lives right it's not that uh, you know uh, you ate something that you shouldn't and you you, re you repent that you have uh, you you pass uh, you, you don't feel very well and uh, that's not this we're not talking small things we're not we're talking big things right uh, the fight you have with your uh, sister that you spend uh, 30 years without talking to her and uh, you go back to the spiritual world and then you repent you recognize and repent can you recognize and repent while still incarnated like jesus said before going to the altar go and make peace with your enemies right so yes you can but more likely we are going to look at our lives and we recognize our mistakes and repent when we are back in the spiritual world that's what the spirits are telling us here but yes we can do it in a physical world also okay I'm not even. What is the consequence of repentance in the spiritual state? The desire for a new incarnation in order to become purified. The spirit perceives the imperfections that deprive it of happiness and seeks a new existence to be able to make amends for its faults. So when you find the mistakes only when you are back in the spiritual world uh you want to repair but opportunities to repair in the spiritual world are more difficult not impossible you can always help andre luis was helping his uh, former family and by the end of no solar right uh, the former wife and the former kids from the spiritual side and even the second husband of the wife right so Again, you can do some work in the spiritual world, but truly you are going to repair when you come to the new incarnation and you face the same situation. It doesn't need to be with the same people, but it's the same situation, right? Uh, you had a fight with your sister, again, going back to the same example. Uh, you are going to face the same fight, maybe with a different person, likely with a different person. And how you deal with that uh, experience is how you are going to prove to yourself that you have learned from it and become a better spirit. But it, that's why you wish to have, spirits wish to have a new incarnation, because you want to repair as soon as possible. And some, some spirits struggle in the spiritual world because of duty. And they know that uh, the opportunity to forget and repair is a new incarnation and that's why they ask for new incarnation and that's why again uh, opportunities for a new incarnation are not very uh, doesn't happen for all of them because again we have three times more spirits in the spiritual world than, the, than in the physical world and uh, we have to take opportunities while we are here to learn and to repair okay now yeah, yeah. one question are sure. you saying that the repair can only take place in the physical plane? Uh, only is not the exact word. Okay, it can it can take place in the spiritual world also. The repair, let's say, you know, going back to the sister that you fought, you are uh, you go back to the spiritual world. She's still incarnated. You are feeling guilty, and you want to help. So you can be around her to help her in the difficult situations that she's facing in the physical world. So you are doing some repair. But to fully repair the mistake, you have to face the same situation again, not necessarily with the same individuals uh, in a new incarnation. The same challenge, you have to face it to prove to yourself that you have overcome that uh, problem, right? But, but, yeah, but that same challenge has to be manifested in the physical world. It yeah, yeah. not be manifested in the spiritual world. Yeah, you can do some of the repair in the spiritual world, but 
the challenge fully, itself is in fully, the uh, to fully uh, make sure that you have overcome it, you have a new, a new incarnation. That's why we have reincarnations, is for atonements, reparations, and trials, right? If we could uh, do all the involvement in the spiritual world, there will be no reincarnation, right? That's so true. the necessity of reincarnation is because you are coming without remembering, you are coming surrounded by different orders of spirits around you, and with the challenges that uh, you have to make to prove yourself that you have um, learned from it, right? You're not going to repeat the mistake. So it means that that repair that we're talking about goes beyond the nature of repair and goes into what you call, uh, what, what I would call uh, amending your behaviors, changing your behaviors, because you did say that the same challenge can be uh, can be met with other people. It doesn't necessarily my sister or my brother. But yeah. it's, a, it's the same specific behavior that 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 is the one that that becomes a challenge. So it becomes an amendment. It means a transformation of behavior on my part. Exactly. You you need to be. You need to prove to yourself that you have changed. It exactly. doesn't matter with whom. Exactly. Very That's good. why the situation is the same, but uh, with whom it doesn't really matter. Uh, if it's if it can be with a person, same again. Uh, you know, you come with your sister again as mother and daughter or uh, brother and uh, uh, exactly. father and son, then, you know, better. You have an opp opportunity to repair with the person. But if not, you can repair with others. Very good. It's a challenge itself. Exactly. Very yes. good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, so. If we use the same example as the having a fight with the sister, we go back to the spiritual world and recognize that that was silly, that was unfair, that was a waste of time, you regret, and you even have the opportunity to help that sister that is still in the physical world, as Jean used as an example, and you do that so. Yeah. In the next incarnation, you will likely, again, likely, face the same triggers, the same things that led you to fight with your sister in the previous reincarnation to prove to yourself, as John said, that now you are above that level, that now you recognize that get into a quarrel, get into a fight with my sister because of those same triggers is counterproductive and you put yourself above that level now and you would not fight with the sister anymore because we really learned that lesson. Now, need to be the sister? No, it has to be exposed to the same triggers, to the same things that lead you to have that fight. Exactly. And now you'll be exposed to those triggers and you'll say, no, I know better now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because the whole thing is, it seems to me, this, it's not a matter of a personal issue, it's a matter of spiritual development. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay. I mean, that that next incarnation may not be a sister, may be a co-worker. Yeah. It may be someone on the streets. It may be anyone, but the triggers will be quite similar. Yeah. Quite parallel, yeah. You don't forgive her, but she forgave you. She moved on, and uh, you, you're not going to be around her anymore in the next incarnation. So, again... The situation will happen someone completely different. Yeah. Someone that maybe have the same challenge as you to, to see if they can overcome the same situation. So you are put in face of that person. All right, Philip. Thank you. 992. Philip. Hello, Philip. Okay, it's not paying attention here, so uh, let me read. 992, what is the consequence of repentance in the corporeal state? The spirit advances in its present life. If there is time to repair, it's false. Whenever your conscience bothers you or shows you an imperfection, you can always improve. So that's ideally what we have to do, right? 
recognize our mistakes in the uh, corporeal state and repair. So you fought with your sister, you spent there 40 years not talking to her, but eventually you look at it and said, uh, I cannot live this life without making repairs. So you go after your sister and you try to repair. Again, you try to repair. It doesn't matter the other side. It matters your side and your effort. If she's unable to make amends, that's on her. But you have to do your part again. You have to repair the mistakes we made uh, in any possible way. And again, it's a sincere repentance and sincere repair. It cannot be repentance because you are afraid of going to hell. Because that's not sincere. That's just fear. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's important. It has like, sincere that, repentance. I like that. And sincere yeah. effort to repair. Uh, because what happens to many of us, because of our religious upbringing, right? As you get closer to the end of life, we start getting afraid of where are, are we going. We have to do it right, otherwise we are going to hell. And then you start trying to artificially make repairs. If it's not sincere, it's not going to be fully uh, work. But again, uh, artificial repair is better than no repair. So it's already a start but uh, you cannot fully complete it if it's not sincere, okay? I think we lost Philip, he froze, I think. Anyways, um, okay, we, we're going to stop here if anyone has any comment questions. Elmo, right here? Uh, no, thank you, Ron. Okay, so next week we continue on uh, 993, okay? Um, so what we have for this weekend on, um, on Saturday, we have a presentation by Yasko Arakava, What Matters in the Discarnation Process. She's going to talk about in the book, Workers of Life Eternal, the case of Demas, which is one of the five cases of discarnation that you study in the book. Um, and she talks about as he was a dedicated spiritist in ass assistance to others and aware of, of the spiritual life, but faced such a painful and troublesome discarnation process. Uh, the, the work of uh, the team that was trying to redeem. It's a very interesting mm -hmm. case that uh, you, you will uh, like it if you watch it, if you read the book, okay? Well, the symposium is Saturday, one week from this Saturday, is next Saturday in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you can watch it online. Um, the website is spiritissymposium.org. Uh, we will be there. So it's a whole day event on, uh, remember, it's on the West Coast time, so starts later here, of course. Um, and Sunday, we have the, our Q&A session. Book club next week on Wednesday at 7 p.m., chapter 12 of the book, Prelude to the Divine Kingdom. Okay? Carol, can you do our final prayer? Oh, yes, done. Is the symposium uh, going to be televised or something? Channel? Yes? Yes, every year it is online. You go to spiritissymposium.org and you have all the, the links there for the for the all the events there will be a, some uh, q a uh, sessions live uh, live uh, round tables and uh, the, the the subject of the symposium this year is uh, spiritual path to mental balance for those that have uh, been watching the series Spiritist um, Psychology and Spirituality that the United States Spiritist Federation has every Saturday. You probably saw, um, what's her name? Anai, I think, um, discussing that. And she'll be at the symposium also. Um, 
talking about this. It's it's a symposium very focused on psychology and spirituality. Okay. Uh, Carol, can I do our final prayer, please? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, John and Elmo and Philip. Thank you for reading today. Infinite creator and divine providence, we give thanks for being together again for our studies of the Spirit's book, the chapter regarding atonement and repentance. Earth is moving toward becoming a planet of regeneration. As individuals who are incarnated, we will assist to make this happen. During the interim, all who are incarnated will have atonements that need repair. We can progress through suffering or through love and charity. A person with a mission will face struggle. However, they will use humility and resignation to progress. Proactive effort is a powerful key and tool to develop and progress. Repair can happen in the physical or the spiritual world. Are we sincere about it in either case? Do goodness with a positive intent and faith to move forward day by day. It's a constant effort and it takes a lot of practice. Have we learned our lessons and are we trying each day to improve a little bit more day by day? Idleness and voluntary uselessness is not helpful to the soul, the spirit, and general well-being and happiness. We give thanks to our spiritual benefactors and the good spirits for guiding us and inspiring us this evening. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us and for our loved ones, our teachers, the directors, our counselors, the mediums, the workers, and the participants of SGNY. We pray for inner peace, and we inevitably need to go more deeply toward world peace. And for those who are suffering in the physical and spiritual worlds, we pray for them, and also for SGNY and all spiritist centers throughout the world. May they grow, expand, progress, and be protected always. As we close, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we return to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers. We know that we are never alone and guidance is always available to us as we listen, glean the lesson, the intent, and move forward with positive attitude. May we go forth now as beacons of light, reminding ourselves how important it is to love, to have light and peace, and through service and generous charity to help the world become a better place. So be it.